Well, I want to thank everybody for being here today. Um, as you can tell, we here united as a city, both with our entire city council, our administration, our police department, our law enforcement, our various departments all coming together as we've been continuing to work on what we call Operation Hope and Order. Um, the ongoing operation in Columbia is a multifaceted approach to address the issues of homelessness and crime. As you know, over the last year, we've had lots of discussions and we have moved forward in lots of different paths, trying different things to address the issue that is centered in the core of our city. Uh, it's continuing to grow and hitting the different pockets of our community and we're trying to address it and continue to address it by putting all hands on deck. But I want people to understand what we're dealing with and what we have been de dealing with. We've had over 11,000 service calls in this corridor. In the last year, we've had 455 arrests, but we've offered over 700 people services to help them move on and get into permanent housing, treatment, mental health evaluations. This operation involves not only our police department, but DMH, Department of Mental Health Pathways Unit, which has been active in numerous calls, service, and actions taken here. The operation focus on, focuses on our transient citizens' criminal activity with significant number of custodial arrests, field books, citations, field interviews, information reports, and services offered. The operation is linked with the Department of Mental Health to provide the necessary competency to stand trial valuations for municipal level criminal offenses helping to identify unsheltered offenders who are deemed incompetent or, and refer them to providers who can provide them the mental health related services. We cannot be a strong city if we're, if we're not compassionate, but we also have to have law and order. And for us to have law and order, we have to enforce the laws and we have to protect the citizens, all citizens. And living on the streets is not a way to provide somebody a safe way to live and exist in our community. We're invested in recruiting more in law enforcement. We're continuing to do what we need to do to not only enhance the, the talents, the training, the technology, and investing in our police officers, but looking at new innovative ways that we can address the issue and help by looking at extending our yellow shirts programs, our clean and safe programs, investing and in working with non-traditional methods to help us not only address the issue, but help people get the help they need by identifying them, helping them get in. As you know, we, we propped up our rapid shelter this year, and I have to commend the staff we gave them a direction in 70 days they were able to build a rapid shelter and start affecting the lives immediately. And you'll hear more from Kamisha, our director, in a little bit with the successes and, and the numbers of the folks that we've been able to affect. But this is a community-wide issue. That means all hands on deck. We're going to continue to invest and do the things that we need to do, but we also need our property owners and our citizens to help. That means we need to do everything we can to secure your property and work together. We're continuing to upgrade our lighting, which you'll hear more about, trim landscaping, do the things that the city can do, but we can't do it all. And that's why we're calling on folks to continue to work with us while we continue to invest in these actions and continue to move forward in addressing the issue, not running from the issue. But that also means we gotta think bigger and longer. What we're doing right now is short-term fixes. Long-term, we need to relocate transitions. We need to relocate Oliver Gospel and the services into a comprehensive one-stop campus that allows us to provide all the services in one location so that we are not moving people all over town to get the services. By having services in a one-stop shop, it makes a difference. That means things like having um, DMV work with us to get people's licenses and IDs done on site. DHEC working with us to help people, those folks that are from here from the state of South Carolina be able to get 
their birth certificates, what they need so that we can help make sure that they're getting their benefits and their services. That means having clinicians on site, health care on site, having the various components where we can have folks that are in temporary long-term mental health and addiction counseling in one site. We cannot continue to do it fragmented. It is clearly not working. We've seen a great influx of folks in the community and we are the capital city and we're going to address it. We're going to be working with our partners at the county in our surrounding counties and cities to get them engaged to help be part of this. This is a regional issue. And if the city of Columbia takes the stance that we're only going to put down and push hard, that means we're going to spread the problem out and create 15 other problems. We're not here to create more problems. We're here to solve problems. And the only way we solve this is have a plan both short term and long term. And we need everyone in our community to understand that we're doing things every day. All these people up here today have spent hours working every week to address the issue. From Dr. Bussels and Mr. Brennan working on, and Reverend McDowell working on our homeless task force to set the stage, to our administrative staff and our police department working from everything from rapid shelter to enforcement of our existing laws to making sure that we're creating opportunities for people to get health. Working with our, our partners in the community, DMH, Laredac, it's not enough, folks. We gotta do more. And we gotta get the red tape cut and we gotta make it a simple process. You look at cities like Houston and other cities who have adopted the one-stop shop campus, they're making a difference. We're not going to solve it 100%, but folks, we can reduce it. And we can make sure that we not only provide hope and opportunity and a quality of life for those who are less fortunate, but we also maintain the quality of life and the law and order that our citizens, businesses, and residents deserve. We're committed to continue to do every aspect we can from our code enforcement to our city beautification. But at the end of the day, we're going to take each one of these actions with compassion. We believe ensuring a clean, safe city is the compassionate thing to do. No one is helped by living on the streets. We're partnering with the Department of Health and our governor, our legislators, and everyone to, to address this issue in every facet we can and use every tool that is available to us. But we're not done. We're going to try some different things, some alternative things. Yes, maybe Operation Lawnmower, maybe Operation Clean Up Columbia, where we work with first-time offenders to really help make a difference in our community and provide them an alternative. The last thing we want to do is put people in jail, but we cannot continue to allow people to, to break the law and continue to be repeat offenders in multiple, multiple accounts. So we're going to try some different things. We're going to work together. But at the end of the day, our ultimate goal is to make sure that we get each individual the help that they need in our community. And that may be some, some tough love that comes with that. But we're going to do that together. Because our city's strengths lies within our unity and collective effort. Let's continue to work together to make Columbia a safe, clean, and compassionate city for all. With that, I'd like to ask our city manager to come up and give a few remarks followed by our chief of police, uh, Ms. Shepard, Kamisha Shepard, our, uh, our director of Rapid Shelter, and then Robert Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. Um, I really don't have any prepared remarks, so bear with me. I'm speaking honestly from my heart. Um, I want to say thank you to Mayor Rickman. Columbia City Council, the efforts that they put into resourcing um, what we can do in our sphere of influence here at the City of Columbia to make a difference. Um, as the mayor said, this isn't about recognition. Um, it's not about us getting up here um, scolding anyone or anything of that nature, but it is about telling the story because what we are finding I think just because we are the face of it, our officers on the streets every day working with individuals who are in need or who may be um, 
doing things that they're not supposed to do. Um, they're the visible face of this. And I think it gets lost oftentimes all of the other efforts, genuine efforts that have gone behind resourcing Rapid Shelter Columbia or beautification efforts that our public works staff so diligently does every day. Those are the things that the city of Columbia can do um, through its departments, through these policymakers, putting a very focused effort on um, what needs to be done to make a difference in the lives of people who are probably at their worst. But at the same time, there must be a balance because as we're trying to help those individuals, our business owners, our families, our college students, people who want to visit the city of Columbia and, and you know, participate in the commerce and growth of the city, shouldn't feel afraid. They shouldn't feel intimidated. They shouldn't feel like they can't walk down the street and witness certain behaviors. So the, the intentionality behind the operation hope and order is real. There's a hope that we can address these things in a way that help the individuals who need it and at the same time make sure and dictate that there's law and order in the city of Columbia so that we continue to flourish and grow as the capital city. Quite frankly, I'm beginning to feel that in our sphere of influence, we're up here telling that story of all these things that we're doing, and you'll hear from Kamisha Heppard, our Director of Homeless Services, you'll hear from Chief Holbrook, you'll hear from Robert Anderson, our Public Works Director, on the literal things we're doing, the successes behind those things. But even with all that, the system is broken, and the cycle has to stop because at the end of those things that we're doing, we need mental health professionals, stabilization units, uh, substance abuse professionals, people that understand what the, some of the challenges the individuals are facing that we may have to arrest, take them to court or jail and then court and they get right back, right back out again. So again, we're doing what we can in our spheres of influence, but we need to stop all the talking with all the other elected officials, the legislature and the other policy makers and the state agencies and act. Rapid Shelter Columbia, you will hear in a moment, is scalable. It works. You will hear how it's working. But we were able to stand up 50 units on the backs of the city of Columbia, cost the taxpayers of Columbia to do this, and it's working. When we've got 50 individuals who are moving through a process where case managers have been hired and clinicians are working with them on site, what, and our wonderful staff that I see sitting here in the audience, what the mayor is talking about is scale that up to be something that our whole state can be proud of and our whole region can be proud of. And we have multiple opportunities, more than just the 50 units we have, but more opportunities than that with the right professionals on site to assist. So I stand by it. I love what this council has put their energy into. I think we are demonstrating what we can do as a city, but we cannot do it by ourselves. And so I think this, is, this today is a call for collaboration because it's honestly frustrating when you continue to do and do and do and you wonder to what end will there actually be that ultimate achievement of the goal that is gonna help individuals who so need it and continue to see our city thrive. I love it when we see the excitement and entertainment on a Saturday downtown Columbia of Soda City. But I get frustrated and this happens if not every day, every other day when I'm riding down Main Street and I see an individual. And y'all in the media know me 
uh, long enough now. I've been doing this a long time in the city. I don't post. The first time in my career that I almost posted was about two weeks ago at the intersection of Maine and Hampton. And an individual who obviously no clothes on except for some shorts, no shoes, acting out in the middle of the intersection, clearly on meth or something. I knew that within 10 minutes, all of our metro region was gonna engage. All those resources were gonna be deployed to try to help this one individual who was acting out, uh, disturbing others, scaring young people. And for what? Did he need to go to jail? Probably not. Did he need certain assistance? Absolutely. But those are the stories we're telling every day, but it's happening all the time. So this from the manager is a call to action. Because I see what these elected officials are doing. They put their money where the mouth is. And we're going to keep doing it. We can't do it by ourselves. To give you a little more insight on some of those actions that are actually happening, I would ask for Kamisha Heppard, our Director of Homeless Services, to share a little bit and send your uh, briefing document you'll get today from our um, public relations team. But she'll just highlight a couple of those efforts after Chief Holbrook talks about the efforts from a law enforcement perspective. You're going to see a lot of presence. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. But he's going to talk about the why behind that. Sorry. Thank you, Ms. Wilson and, uh, and Mayor Rickman. Um, it's, um, it's, it's very refreshing to have the, the support and, and funding that um, everybody represents is behind me. Um, um, law enforcement, public safety is absolutely our, our top priority. And, and as Ms. Wilson said, it's um, represented in, um, in the investment in that. Um, I'd first like to say thank you to our uh, police officers and our clinicians um, and uh, our partner um, divisions in the city that have worked these last few weeks in particular to get this operation up and running. Um, our, our officers, um, as you know, we, um, we have uh, challenging times in, in terms of staffing and our officers have not pushed back one, one second. But we, we've spent a lot of time in the Elmwood Corridor and um, I, I think everybody would agree with me. We've, we've really just reached a tipping point. You know, the, the development um, and growth downtown in particular, just but citywide, is um, is very exciting. And um, we, um, with that growth, we've seen a um, an uptick in criminal activity um, that is being perpetrated by um, a, a few, um, a, a percent of this transient population. And uh, this is not it's not at all been about um, an indictment on those suffering from, from homelessness. It's about criminal activity um, that is being perpetrated by some um, that are part of this population, and that's, that's really been our focus. Um, our Pathways Unit has done a phenomenal job um, reaching people where they are, if you will, um, referring them to services. Um, so those are our success stories. You know, you could argue arrests or failures, um, but um, we've got to change a culture. I mean, when I say we, um, you know, we've had criminal activity, we've had um, assaults with weapons, um, guns and knives, we've had sexual assaults, we've had robberies. Um, it was just the other day we had, um, and when I say of these acts, these are people that are identified as being unsheltered. Um, we had somebody in the middle of Elmwood with a gun, um, waving it at, at um, people passing by in vehicles. Of course, that was somebody that was an armed career criminal, had no business to not even to, to possess a gun or not be in prison. Um, and then we um, we continue to arrest over and over um, some of our repeat offenders that are chronically homeless. Um, to fuel their criminal activity, we have aggressive panhandling, um, we have theft, and then we have um, businesses that are. Um, contributing to this that are part of this corridor. We um, targeted our, our, the first business that was, you know, 
uh, very much um, you know, part of the conversation. You know, a year ago, we started looking at the Blue Store on, on North Main and, and how it was furthering um, this activity and, and, in my opinion, taking advantage of a vulnerable population. And we've got, we've got two commercial um, stores now, that um, the Circle K on, on Elmwood and the Pit Stop. Um, combined, they account for over 1,200 calls for service for our police officers. And, and they're not trivial calls for service. They're serious calls for service, 1,200. Um, and that's part of the 11,000 in that corridor, 11,000. That represents 38% of our North Region um, calls for service. Why is that? Should that be significant to you? Um, everybody knows North Region is primarily 29203. We're, we're losing a generation to gun violence. And we have very important things that we need to be um, um, focusing our attention on. And the time that is spent dealing with this lawlessness um, in this Elmwood corridor is, is tearing at the fabric um, and the foundation of all this growth and, and excitement that we see. And we've, we've got to affect some, some change, and we're doing that. Um, just in the last two weeks, we've arrested 73 people, and we're going to continue to have our foot on the gas when it comes to criminal violations. Um, we're looking at a program to where we um, can collaborate with a private vendor, private security vendor in the near future to help take a few things off of our plate in, the, in that quarter, um, specifically our property checks and um, some checks of property dealing with um, people that have sought shelter. Um, 30 minutes before this news conference, we had a, a parking um, one of the city parking attendants encountered somebody sleeping in the back of a pickup truck in one of our parking decks, um, confronted that person, the person ended up assaulting the uh, parking attendant. That person was homeless. Um, this is the stuff that we're, that we're um, that's an example of a city, um, a city worker that encountered somebody that was aggressive. Our, our business owners, um, uh, our, our, our residents that are adjacent to that corridor, they experience this every single day. Uh, the trash and debris um, that is in and around these two businesses I mentioned, um, it's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. There has got to be a shared responsibility to address this problem. We're not going to arrest our way out of it, um, but we're also not going to put up with criminal activity. And, and that's our job to, to deal with that, and, and we're going to keep doing that. Um, our, the Pathways Unit, um, they, that works. And we work hand in glove with um, our rapid shelter folks, and um, they're doing a terrific job. And I, I absolutely um, think it's successful and it is scalable, and I hope that we do that. We've, I, I applaud the, um, the foresight of the uh, of these folks up here about we got to, you know, we've got to move these services off uh, off the main line downtown and get them. <clears throat> Um, working more collaboratively at a one-stop shop, and I think that would be a game changer for our, our city and the, the entire Midlands, for that matter. But um, we, we've got to change the culture, and we've we've talked about this for over nine years that I've been here. But we are at a tipping point. It is different right now. Um, the population we deal with is ever changing. Um, there is more people in mental crisis. I see more addiction. I see more aggressive activity by by these folks, um, and it seems to be um, you know, new faces all the time. So in spite of all of our efforts, uh, we've got to do more, and I think that is kind of the point of this, is it's that shared responsibility, um, and it's time for people to um, step up and be part of the solution. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, City Council Manager. Um, so I'm just going to share some information about Rapid Shelter Columbia. Um, we started in November of 2022, and since then we have received 292 referrals um, to provide services to individuals experiencing homelessness. We, as um, an agency, Rapid Shelter Columbia, the case managers, <clears throat> they have placed 111 service referrals to partners in the community, meaning they have um, referred clients to mental health services, um, substance use, 
whatever the need is, they're making their referrals um, to get clients primary care services. Um, since November, we have placed 18 residents into permanent housing, um, and we are still working with those individuals. We still provide services. We still make sure that they're getting what they need from the community. Um, we have also, um, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. So with the overflow, um, we provide, we were open 63 nights of the season. Um, CPD dropped off 717 um, individuals experiencing homelessness. We've collaborated with our um, partners in the community to provide outreach services. Out of the task force recommendations, it was recommended that we have some evening, weekend services, and we have implemented that. We have um, a collaboration with Transitions Homeless Center and USC Supportive Housing, where they do outreach for the City of Columbia. We have that evening person, and um, they have conducted over 70 outreach events. They've made contact with over 200 individuals experiencing homelessness. They have made over 70 service referrals, and they have provided 34 Greyhound bus tickets. And that's a program that the city has to where individuals experiencing homelessness, if you have family in California and they're willing for you to come there and them help you get back on your feet, we're able to send you there. Um, Today's um, meeting is about um, bringing everybody together, filling in the missing parts, and um, I'm behind the idea where Mayor talks about a one-stop shop with everything in one place. Not that we just want to put something in the country someplace, but we want to have a coordinated effort at one property that provides emergency shelter, transition, transitional housing, and permanent supportive housing. Um, some individuals require to be in a residential facility where they're monitored daily, where they're making sure that they're taking their meds. All of this would be at the one-stop shop, but we need our community partners to do that. We need Columbia Area Mental Health and Laredo Act. We need Mercy. We need all, all of the partners in the community. Um, every partner has their specific skill set, and we need that because we don't have that. We're missing those pieces. And I'm just going to follow my and say we're calling for help from everybody. Um, we want to serve the population with compassion, and we'll do that with your help. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to take a little page out of the city manager's book and say that we were called to action a little bit. So uh, we were called to action, uh, you know, a year ago or so, but really this year to focus on beautification efforts in the city of Columbia. And when we got a call to action on Elmwood, we took our crews out and we really inspected Elmwood and said, what can we do? So one of the things, uh, several things we've done, we've repaired the fence on uh, Assembly Street so you know citizens could not jaywalk across and that way it, mo it forces them into a safer atmosphere at the intersections. We're working on some fences, fencing on Elmwood Avenue. We've mowed the right-of-ways, we've done some beautification efforts. One of the efforts we'd like to put forward and work with the police department on and continue to work on is being able to see through some of the bushes. So we did remove some bushes last year. We actually rebeautified those uh, this year and we've actually recently put mulch out so we can see distance through the buildings so we can see where people are you know, littering or what they can do so we can provide extra services. The last thing we did that we really think it's gonna make a big impact is we trimmed all the trees on Elmwood Avenue and we're actually still working in the corridor around Calhoun to trim trees. And this is going to allow for one thing that we think is going to help, and that is this changeover to LED lighting. On my way to City Hall today, I did see a Dominion contractor down here actually starting to make the switch over from high pressure sodium, which will be a yellow light to LEDs. We think that will light this corridor up and hopefully help make it safe. So we will continue to work with all of our partners and our police department to make sure that we provide beautification efforts that are safe.
Well, I want to thank you all for being here, and we'll open it up for any questions from the media.